the wait is over. Okay, first game of the preseason is upon us and our team plays tonight. Y'all ready for it? I'm super hyped. But the question for me is, what was the homework assignment that Tibbs gave to his players at the end of last season? What was the homework assignment? When he talked to each of those players, what did he tell them they needed to work on? And what did he tell them they should expect for next season as a possibility? If you ask me, in order for this New York Knicks team to, to take another step as I know they will, something's got to change. And to me, the change is quitting Grimes. Yes, I said it, goddammit. The change is quitting Grimes. And the role that he was pitched on and the things that he was told to work on is first and foremost his consistency and his, his versatility because the New York Knicks, in order for them to take the next step, Quinn Grimes is going to have to be the next option. Quentin Grimes is going to have to be the third option. All that and more here on Knicks Deli. Stay tuned. What's going on, Knicks Nation? I want to welcome you back to Knicks Deli, baby. Knicks Deli Edition. That's right, that's right. I'm your host, Shea. And you already know we are first to many and second to no one when covering the news, team views, and a who's who connected to our New York Knicks. Now, I want to hop into this video today. The whole purpose of this video is to talk about our New York Knicks and the new third option. The new third option this season. In order for our New York Knicks to take that next step, I think the change that we're going to make is that we're going to have a different third option this year. All right. And the third option this year, I believe, is going to be Quentin Grimes. Round of applause for Quentin Grimes. So I already know you're like, all right, you're bugging. OK, but maybe not. The New York Knicks have taken great steps over the last three seasons. I mean, two out of the three seasons, they made the playoffs. And incrementally, you could see the team getting better. And what comes along with that is a solid foundation. What is that solid foundation? Cohesion. And the fact that they are cohesive and they stick together. But at the end of a season such as last season, where we really did make strides, where we really did go beyond the expectations that were had for us, that were laid out there for us, you couldn't help but leave the end of the season with a bitter taste in your mouth. Right? You couldn't help but leave the season wondering, man, what if? What if Julius Randle didn't get injured? What if a player or two would have made an additional shot? Okay? What if we beat Miami and we were represented in the conference finals? What if would we have beaten the, the other team and made it to the finals? What if? Okay? So you know, it's, it's a lot of what ifs that were present there for us at the end of last season, but there was a lot of hope as well, okay? Because we also had our first, that was a season for the first time we had a point guard leading this team. A point guard who could deliver, a point guard who has the clutch gene, all right? Another opportunity to see the players that we know have talent who are currently on our team with a point guard on the floor, someone who is an extension of the coach that's on the floor and who is just as hard-nosed and dogged as the head coach. But the question really becomes, out of the three seasons that we had and the five seasons where we had two of our uh, core players, two of the players that have been the foundation for this team, Julius Randle and RJ Barrett, okay? On the same team for five years, and it was always good, it's always good seeing training camp and you see you know, they sat there and RJ reflected on it. He's like, man, I've never known the NBA without this guy over here. In all of my five seasons. So my response to that was, oh, maybe that should change. Maybe it should change. Because I know the RJ Hive is going to come for me. I don't care. Not today. I don't care. Cause I'm bringing smoke to RJ today. All the smoke. 
No, I'm not. I'm just playing. I'm not bringing smoke to RJ. I think RJ is going to be critical to what it is that we're trying to do this season and where we need to go. So if you are an RJ fan, I know many of you are. I am as well. Once again, he is ours. Any player that is ours, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling for. For nothing but success. But what I will say is the dynamic on this team has to change. The dynamic has to change. And after the three seasons that we had, two made the playoffs. I mean, RJ did step up in the playoffs last year. You got to give him credit for that. But the regular season, he was so inconsistent. Super inconsistent for five years. After five years, you know, they say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. I think if we go in looking at RJ with the level of the amount of his touches that he has on the offense for a sixth year or a fifth year, I don't know which one he's in, then I think basically the prescription is insanity the order that we place on the menu today would be insanity if we go into the season doing the same thing and once again i just don't think that's what it is i think that the homework assignment and maybe a seed that was planted in quentin grimes coming up this season is that you're going to get more touches you're going to get more touches and if the new york knicks were smart they would they would make the attempt to make Quentin Grimes the third option. And I got a couple of reasons for why, okay? And that's what I wanna go into uh, today. First and foremost, RJ is inconsistent. You know, what we see, sometimes it could be the most frustrating thing, man. There's too many games in which he's either disappearing on offense or um, he's just missing assignments on defense. And I think that speaks to, um, you know what Quentin Grimes can bring. I think we have our sets that we run. I think uh, uh, Jalen Brunson has the autonomy to control the game. It used to be that Tom Thibodeau was calling every play. I think he has confidence in Jalen Brunson who knows the playbook to be able to shake off a call and be able to call his own play as well. So I think all of that is there, but you're only as good as the options you have on your team. That's any team. That's why we always window shop and we look at other teams and we ooh and ah, we wonder, we pontificate, who could we bring to our team? All right. That's because you're only as good as the options you have available to you. All right. And I think there are moments where we undervalue the options that are directly under our nose. And Quentin Grimes is Quentin Grimes is one of those options. All right. And I think it is the perfect time. I think he is due for a breakout season. Okay, I think he is due for a breakout season. This young man puts in the work. This young man goes outside of uh, the, the, the barriers or the limits that's set for him. He reaches out to former players and he works out and trains with them. He picks their brains on the game, games that are similar to his game or elements. You know, people who are really top notch at something that they've done in this league and found success in. He's reached out to them and you love that work. You know the talent is there. You know the ability is there for this young man to be able to break the rotation of Tom mother flipping Tibble. Let it be known. Everybody knows. Everybody knows how Tom Thibodeau is with young players. Okay? You got to earn your way into the lineup with him. You got to earn your respect from him. Okay? He don't just give you the, the, the reins and go with it. You know... If you are a starter on a Tom Thibodeau team, you've earned that spot. You've earned that spot. And I know a lot of you out there right now, you guys are enamored with, with uh, DiVincenzo and this, that, and the third. Listen, listen. People are saying, oh, we don't know. It's going to be a battle. We don't know who's going to go. Nah, bump all that. That is a Quentin Grimes spot to lose because if nothing else, if nothing else, based on the options you have available, Tom Thibodeau is loyal. Tom Thibodeau is, I mean, nothing else. We see that with, with, um, with Julius. Okay. But you also know if it's clear somebody's being outplayed, Tom Thibodeau is going to go with the best option. All right. But I think the best option is Quentin Grimes. And I think that if we shift this season and start incorporating Quentin Grimes and pushing him out there as the third option, it's going, it could be frustrating at first. Because it's a new role and he has to get acclimated to it. He has to get acclimated to the, 
the league seeing him on film and beginning the game plan for him, but his ability to drive the basketball, his ability and versatility in terms of his vision on the court, being able to pass the basketball, and outright his ability to shoot back down. His ability to shoot that thing is going to position us as a different looking team. And he plays defense. And he plays defense. So my thing is, if the New York Knicks are going to go into this season utilizing Quentin Grimes as a third option. Now, where does that leave RJ? That does that. If nothing else, it could position RJ to make us even deeper. Okay. He just won't get as many of the immediate touches as the other players do. That should free him up. If you have the option for shooting outside, it should, it should increase shooting lanes. It should increase driving lanes, I mean, for RJ Barrett to get to the basket, to attack the basket, and then get the end once. But the way we're currently constituted, RJ Barrett cannot be the one getting the third most touches on this team. It has to be Quentin Grimes. For too many uh, moments, Last season, Quentin Grimes had minimal touches and he was high in efficiency. We can't do that this year. In order for the New York Knicks to take the next step, Quentin Grimes must be the third option. Okay? I got a couple of reasons why, man. Another reason I would say why is first and foremost because of his versatility. I talked about that. The man is versatile. The man is a shooter. The man plays defense, but most of all, the man is a dog. He's a dog. And, and on top of that, he'll have another year where he has chemistry with a point guard. Okay? Point guard who a lot of people will say one of the hangups of Jalen Brunson is that he is an offensive-minded point guard. He is a shoot-first point guard. But the man draws the defense in, which means there are open shots. And one thing I love about this team, this team doesn't let the ball stick too often they've really worked to fight against that so the ball does you know bounce around the outside so the ball will find him especially if it is on paper that he is a third option they got to make sure that the ball finds his hands and that he gets you know his shots up from wherever he is on on the basketball court okay so the point guard is important in that chemistry that increased chemistry is going to be directly affected um, in terms of his game and the outcomes that we see from him. Another reason I'm going to say is who is he competing with? When we look at the shooting guards in the East, okay, and the different teams in the East or in the NBA, damn the East. Let's look at the whole NBA, okay? Shooting guards that I, I, I think of when I think of teams around the league, okay? I think of... Uh, Donovan Mitchell, obviously. Donovan Mitchell is a player that we're like, you know what, man, he's dynamic. We need to get him to the team to stand a third. He's offensive-minded. He's he's an offensive juggernaut. But does he play defense? And he's about the same size as Grimes, if Grimes isn't even taller than he is. Okay? So we're pressed to get a player like Donovan Mitchell, and he only plays one side of the basketball. We see how we expose them. Okay, so why not look at our own guy, see what he would look like if we give him the level of responsibility and the touches, all right? Then another player that you see is Anthony Edwards. You have Anthony Edwards in Minnesota, all right? Anthony Edwards, I don't know if he plays uh, defense. You know, I don't know enough, so I can't speak on that. But you know, offensively, he attacks. You know, so when we think offensive-minded, you know, we think Anthony Edwards, Donovan Mitchell. I'll put those two in the same category. Dynamic personalities are outstanding. Absolute poster boy for his team. But once again, does he get it done on the defensive end? Okay. Same thing goes for Devin, Butch Bo uh, Devin Booker. Same thing goes for Paul George, who they're putting out there as a two guard. The same thing goes for um, Zach Levine. All right. Super bouncy. Offensive explosiveness is there, you know, but does he play defense? There's only a rare few players in this league at the two guard position who plays defense. And this is what will separate Quentin Grimes. If you give him the number of touches, if you make him a focal point of your offense in the largest market in the NBA, 
his star will rise immediately because there's only a few players who are two sides of the ball players. Okay? Jalen Brown is one of them. Jalen Brown, the two guard in the Boston area the for the Boston Celtics, he's one of them. Offensively and defensively, he is a monster. Okay? Another player is Clay Thompson. Absolute legend, multi-time champion, you know, uh, part of the best shooting backcourt in the, back court in the his, history of the NBA. But he got that reputation while at the same time being all team, first team, all defense. Come on, man. Two guard legendary. But still to this day, even when his side isn't falling, defensively, he's no easy win. And lastly, in the, in the player who I think we would directly, you know, uh, co compare Quentin Grimes to is a Desmond Bain. Desmond Bain is the reason why the New York Knicks should make uh, Quentin Grimes the third option in their offense. Desmond Bain. Look at that team. They're all-star. A ball-dominant, shoot-first point guard. Where the offense completely centers around him. And then you have Desmond Bain who fits in nicely. I mean, just sits there nicely, locking up players who are on his responsibility, hitting big shots when needed and necessary, and they move as a singular unit. That's what we need to talk about. That's what we need to talk about. And very easily interchangeably, then the second option or third option could be either a Julius or a Quentin Grimes. But I know we always talk about, you know, uh, the possibility of a superstar. And if that possibility is there, we should absolutely make that move. We work for it. But in the meantime, when we talk about a team being deep and a lot of the comparisons of uh, Detroit Pistons or, you know, the, the San Antonio Spurs who had that season with the teamwork or the Dallas Mavericks, all of those type of teams, they did have superstars, but teamwork was the order of the day. The New York Knicks can find the secret sauce to their winning in the Quentin Grimes. If you make sure he gets the equal amount of touches, I could see him battling a Desmond Bain for that style of play and that impact on your team as you win and you go far in this league. Those are the, those are the competition uh, players that he would match up against in terms of whether or not he is a top tier shooting guard in this league. Absolutely. The confidence is already there from the coach. The fact that he's has him in the lineup, the starting lineup at the age and in the year that he's in. He's already there. But I know, absolutely I know, listen, there's tape out there on us as currently constituted with RJ. And Anthony Edwards, a few seasons back, he tipped his head off. He said, listen, we want RJ taking that shot. We were hoping to get the ball to his hands and let him take the last shot. And RJ going to have unlimited, he going to have unlimited confidence. Unfortunately, he don't got the unlimited ability to match it. I know there's RJ lovers out there. Listen, once again, I'm not bashing this man. He is not consistent. He has shown nothing to be consistent. His mind is a maple mentality, but his, his footwork is maple syrup. <laughs> His mindset, his maple mentality, his footwork in his game at times is maple syrup. Turns the ball over. Doesn't have a jump. He gets his shot blocked because he has no lift. He's not athletic. He doesn't play defense. He's a young star in this league that's going to have to figure out the unique way that his game can make him an all-star. At least a two-time all-star. He's from Duke. Trust me. I'm a former Duke. I'm a former Duke fan. You know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a free agent in terms of my teams now. But former Duke fan, love Coach K. I was listening to Coach K who said he's a multiple time all-star. I'm still waiting to see it. How is he going to separate himself? We are fawning over McCall Bridges when we have an RJ. Now, health-wise, he stays there. Does he play hard? Yes. Is he a fixture? And, and Yes, yes, all of that. He's a good player. But for this team to take another step, we got to do something different. And Quentin Grimes has a lot of potential and he has a lot of talent. 
And I think he is what we need to do different by making him the third option, okay? RJ is simply too inconsistent, all right? And I think the fact that Quentin Grimes is the two-way player is what would separate him from the Devin Bookers in this league, from the Donovan Mitchells in this league. Give him touches. Put him in those, those, those uh, high-pressure moments and see if he delivers. He's, he's shown that he's cold-blooded at times. He's already shown it. Early, early on, he's shown it. Give him the opportunity to get those touches, regular season and postseason, and let's place that, that responsibility on him and see if he produces. And I'm telling you this, the key to our success this year is for him to shine. And for him to shine in New York will bring the recognition that it is that we're looking for. Another winning season in New York. And all eyes will be on New York, as it already is, as will be the target. Will be the target for criticism, increased criticism, and we don't know if that's even possible. Because we're already highly criticized. We've already been for the last 30 years highly criticized. So we don't know if it can get any worse. Yes, it can. Okay? And lastly, I, I just think the shift has to be made. A change has to be made, and I think the change is going to come, and that change is Quentin Grimes as the third option of the New York Knicks. That's all I have. What say you? We got our preseason game tonight. I'm hyped for it. Let's go. Let's see if some of these changes, you know, are going to be implemented. A little bit is going to be shared in the postseason, all right? Keep this in mind, same thing applies to life that applies to our team. If there's no struggle, there's no progress. But also remember this, out here in these YouTube streets, everybody eats. Here at Nick's Daily Edition. Y'all have a great day. Peace.